drakes are pretty much the Asbo kids of the mountain. Not only will they attack you, they will also attack wolves, stone golems or anything else apart from Moga. They may be noisy and have a lot of attitude, but don't be intimidated by these things, let me show you why. You can take them out with one shot if they haven't seen you. Even when the drakes do see it, they would always stop mid fight and hover to attack. The worst thing about the attack is it has got a little knockback effect, which can be dangerous if you're high up on the slopes. I tend to wait for them to get ready to shoot and then pop an arrow in. This is the easiest time to hit them and I don't bother whilst they're flying around. If you kill them on the slopes, unfortunately anything they drop does end up down the bottom of the mountain. These things are so common though, I wouldn't bother running down to get every single one. You take very little damage from their attacks as long as you've got a frost potion active. However, if you haven't got the right protection, then bad things happen. If you don't notice your frost potion running out, scrambling in your bags mid-fight is not ideal. Be sure to check out any of these stone structures you come across as they can contain the red tablet giving the location for Moda. What you get from the drakes are the freeze glands. These are for making frost arrows which you can add to your arsenal. Stone golems are very tanky and hit like a bloody truck. The good news is they are slow and easy to outrun. I will show a couple of different tricks I have been taught with these. My fellow Vikings of the Valheim community that commented on one of my other videos. The names will be up on the screen so that I don't completely butcher the pronunciation. If you dig a nice big hole with your pick, lure the golem a little bit closer, chuck a harpoon in and you can drag it down into the hole. You've then got the choice of either leaving it there to stop it respawning, or if you fancy risking it you can actually jump on top of them and hit them from above. The best melee weapon to use on these is the pickaxe. Make sure to keep them on your toes because you can fall off when they start moving around so you may need to jump back out of the hole pretty quick. It was nearly dead so no problems this time. What they do drop is the crystals. With these you can make the Virgil Lanterns and the crystal walls and a funky weapon you might like to play around with the crystal battle axe. Once you don't get too cocky with the stone golems or you might become a circus act. Good job I got my back at frost potions and food. If you definitely don't fancy taking these things on at close range you can kill them at a distance with the arbalest. It will take about 15 to 20 shots. I shall zoom in to give you a better chance of looking at the damage numbers it will use some iron, but it does give you another option. Stone golems can climb slopes a lot steeper than you might think. I will just run away and leave this thing to it and let's get on to the frost caves. The first two great advantages of the frost caves, it is nice and safe just inside. You can place down a fire for the rest of birth. Also in the frost caves you will only get cold and not get the freezing debuff if you haven't got a wolf cape yet. So you won't have to waste any frost potions whilst you're in here. The bats in the cave don't tend to do an awful lot of damage and you can one or two of them with any weapon. If you get several of them at a time though, sometimes when they're flying around it can be a little bit hard to target them, but not with an AOE weapon like a stag breaker or an iron sledge. This is my weapon of choice to get rid of the annoying bats. Please don't go charging headlong through the caves, you could run around a corner and end up fighting a whole group. Try a bit of old school and just peer around and then see what's there. With any one handed weapon and a decent shield, you'll be able to dispatch the werewolves in singles and quite easily in pairs as well. When you come across any of the doors, I tend to open them and then back up. If you do this, most of the time you should be able to get away before anything sees you and reacts, making things far easier for you to be able to split them up and plan your attack. Due to low ceilings and pillars, again this can be awkward just using the bow to try and hit them. With the arbalist it's much safer just to pick one off and see if there's anything else lurking behind the pillar. Looks like one of them was in a very deep sleep as it didn't even notice his friend taking a bolt up the arse. Let's be nice and wake him up with a bolt and tell him what's happened. Alright here we go, there was a cutlass there as well. These are the most dangerous things down here and they do like playing with fire. No idea why I was holding my shield up, you can't actually block their fire attack. Their claw attacks will also set you on fire. One at a time, as long as you've got decent boots isn't too bad, just get in there and try and kill them as quickly as you can. If you fancy decorating your viking hall, the jute they drop can be used to make red curtains and red carpets. Snazzy. The next cut does gets the jump on me and I stick my shield up to try and block the fire again. As you can see, a totally pointless exercise and then if they manage to get a few hits in you as well, your health goes down quite quickly. Keep a good eye on your health bar and try not to rush the caves and let your health bar regen after a fight. The main reason you'll have for doing the frost caves is the Fenris hair. You can find these stuff in little alcoves just by the wall. You can also find it hanging from the ceilings like three tassels, you can just grab those as well. Later on, I'm going to show you what you can craft with this stuff. It could even prove to be very useful in Ashlands. Just like the crypt, down in these caves you can come across the chests. Very handy if you want to store any loot and come back and collect it later on. I recommend marking this on your map though, in case you do forget to come back after clearing the rest of the cave. There's always plenty of crystals in the caves in all the nooks and crannies. Nice to have another option so you never have to bother with the stone golems if you don't want to. So you can still make the crystal battle axe and make your crystal walls. Just before we leave the frost cave, keep an eye out for Fenris claws, you'll find them on these little mini pillars. Later in the video I'll show you a really cool looking weapon you can make with these. 
The Iron Sledge is a really good upgrade from the Stag Breaker, especially when dealing with the Skeletons. The non-starred ones you can obliterate with one hit, and even the one-star Skeletons are just no problem at all with this weapon. Two hits and you're done. It's definitely worth checking out any of the ruins of the little wooden hut you come across. In the chest it's quite common to find frost arrows, gems, and also onion seeds. Some of the stone structures can be in really awkward places to get to, making it so that you have to scale steep slopes all the way up to the top to get to it. If you haven't unlocked the location of Modder yet though, you just never know which one of these is going to contain the red tablet. And going by the Lord of Sword, it would always be the most awkward one you have to get to. 9 times out of 10 in the mountains, what's going to kill you are the wolves. I'm going to share with you now the rest of the different ways I know how to deal with these, and then you can take your pick and see what suits you. We've already covered the range with the Draugr Bow and the Arbalest, as the walls blend in pretty well though and run really fast, and most of the time you're going to end up with them right in your face, giving you no option but to use melee weapons. I really do like the simplicity of the Serpent Scale Shield, as you can just hold it up and block pretty much all of the damage that they do. Even with a couple of walls at a time you can just block their attacks, and after they've gone for the bite you can just do one or two swings of your sword, and they're not much of a problem. Taking on more than a couple of walls at a time can be pretty risky. The Iron Act gear has got a nice AoE effect with the special move by holding down your middle mouse button. That will knock the walls back and stun them for a short time. However, I do find that holding down the middle mouse button there seems to be a delay between when you do and the special attack performs. Please let me know in the comments below if you've experienced this also. It may just be my Potato 3000. With the three walls at a time, as long as you get in a couple of stones, you do pretty decent damage with the Iron Act gear. It will drain your stamina really fast though, so you might have to back off before you can finish them off by the odd jab. If you come across a larger pack of wolves, the sword and shield will still help you for a while. The problem you'll have with the larger packs is if you can't actually block them from getting behind you. Just trying to block them with your shield, you're going to be quickly overwhelmed and end up dying. I like to show that every weapon combination I tell you is not a flawless win every time. When there's more than a couple of wolves, the best weapon I find is the iron sledgehammer. Because it has an AoE knockback effect and will stun them at the same time, this gives you time for a bit of a breather to be able to reposition yourself and time your attacks more effectively. If you agree or disagree, please let me know in the comments down below. I like to show different scenarios and weapon combinations so that you can choose what you think will suit your playstyle the best. An item in the mountains as well as getting stronger monsters like 1 star and 2 star wolves, chances are you will also come across these funky looking Fenrir things. They do fairly decent damage and if you try hitting them with a two hander, chances are you're going to miss timer and get hit by their melee attacks. For the Fenrir, I highly recommend that you just go with a sword and a shield. The main attack to avoid is when it crouches down and then leaps at you, or as you can see it will take a large chunk of your health. If any wolves join the party, get rid of them first. Now I will show you even when you're low health with your sword and your shield, you can stay calm, relax and still deal with these things, as holding up your shield will block most of the damage that they do. Also they tend to move around a lot and don't continually attack you like the wolves do, giving your health a chance to actually regen. In the mountains, the majority of the time by my own experience, the main time you die is when you actually decide to run. Try and keep your cool even when there's unexpected monsters that turn up. Mr Skeleton is definitely going to regret taking pot shots whilst I'm fighting a Fenrir. Have it. No mountain guide is complete without talking about silver. I will share with you all the tips and tricks that I know to make things safer and more efficient to cut down on the amount of trips that you would have to take when mining for silver. With your wishbone equipped, when you come in range within the silver, you will see the blue lines emanating from your centre, as well as hearing a ping. The faster the lines get and the faster the pings come together, the closer you are to a silver vein. To mine silver, you will need at least an iron pick, bring either a bronze pickaxe or an antler pickaxe as well. Then what I do is dig directly down to make the walls nice and steep, this will prevent any stone golems or wolves being able to come down to get to you. The drakes can still shoot down of course, as I showed you earlier though these won't be much of a problem for you. Using a bronze or antler pickaxe will save all of the durability for your iron one to be used exclusively for mining the silver. After you've dug all the way down just go all the way around and underneath the silver. The silver vein can even act like a roof giving you a bit of shelter, so if you pop down a little campfire as well, you can continually top up your rest of buff. Important to keep that stamina regen going with the amount of mining that you're going to be doing. If you do end up with a freezing debuff whilst you're mining, I wouldn't worry too much, you're not going to instantly die from it or anything. All it will do is slowly tick down your health bar. The reason why I like to put down campfires though isn't so much for your health, but that the debuff does actually reduce your stamina regen by 60%, which will drastically slow down the efficiency of your mining. If you dig out yourself a stone overhang, it can be handy as the act as a natural roof, meaning you can pop down a workbench for repairing your antler pickaxe whenever you need to. After you've mined all the way around the silver and underneath it and it's just hovering in mid-air, you may have seen this trick many times before with the copper veins if you've done any, 
but all you need to do afterwards is jump on top head to about the middle of it all you need to do now is swap over to your iron pickaxe give it a few good swings and just wait for the big bang theory with just one silver thing you will end up with a fair amount of silver i hope you remember to bring your virgil belt as the silver is really heavy 78 bits of silver would take three trips to get them down in the chest at the foot of the mountain as you know you can't travel through teleporters with the metal i think this is a very unnecessary time sink let me know what you think about this mechanic as soon as you got yourself some silver the first out of two items i recommend that you craft first is the wolf cake this will definitely save you a lot of time in the long run from having to make so many frost potions and the second one is the draugr fangbo the increased damage and the poison effect will definitely help you out when fighting the mountain dragon speaking of the dragon to actually summon her you're going to need three of the dragon eggs these things are really heavy and weigh 200 units each so you will only be able to carry one at a time i did test out a theory of using carts to transport the eggs down the mountain the carts aren't exactly stable going downhill and this didn't go to plan what i did discover is you can turn carts into giant toys for the actual wolves fetch there's a good boy and here lies what remains of the cart oh hang on here's the rest of it all may not be lost after all that's one lucky egg cracking as i promised earlier it's time to show you what you can craft from the items at the frost caves you can craft the fenris coat the fenris leggings and also the fenris hood this is classed as a light armor set with movement bonuses and at the forge if you've got enough fenris claws you can craft yourself some flesh rippers this is what the full set looks like it certainly looks a bit different from the other armor and weapon types looks like wolverine has been getting it on with jawas you heard it here first now to show you the effect of the fenris blessing just a standard bonfire let's see how well the fire resistance works as you can see i am taking absolutely no damage whatsoever ashlands will be coming at some point i know it's just a bonfire not lava but this armor set could come in very useful in the future i do hope i've helped you out in some way and you've enjoyed the video please remember to tap the like button if you have it really does make a big difference for small youtube channels like this one and is very much appreciated thank you see you soon and of course take it easy